first oh, thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think let's let's get started. Uh so I just wanted just, uh, wanted this to be like a QA session. Uh so I take any questions and then of course I'll touch into some of uh the news releases that we had this week or some of the things that that we had uh this week that we that actually shocked the market or came in greater than expected uh for for, for the market uh or they came in as a surprise for the market so yeah so let's let's if you if you guys have any questions uh let's let's start with that first Um, yeah, my king, I kind of like have a question, but each I'm going to take you way back now. I think I'm going to take you to November, December. Uh, oh, not a problem. Around. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I kind of like got a bit confused when the, the, the Japanese government came out to say that they're going to increase that, um, that, uh, what do you call this? Yeah, uh, range control. for the for the for the what is it for the yield yeah uh, yield curve control yeah yield curve control yes and then what happened afterwards was that um the market sort of like expected that they were are now going to increase the interest, the interest rate. rate they sort of like took it like they they are now moving away mm-hmm. from the negative interest and then they are now going to increased it and then the java the, the 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 reserve bank comes and then they don't and then they sort of like make it like no it was not the plan to increase the interest rate so yes. i'm a bit con- and it does also look like the 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 bond rates have hit the ceiling i don't know if i'm explaining it yeah uh, well, but yeah, I, I, I'm just a bit confused what, what is going on, on there. So maybe you can just touch on it a bit. Okay. So uh, if, you re- if you recall in our last, uh, was it the second one, where, where we looked at the Bank of Japan, uh, where we actually read their, their monetary policy statement. Yeah, 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 I remember. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yes. So okay. essentially... Yeah, yeah, they said they said the reason behind actually maintaining the yield, yield curve control so that they maintain uh, a ultra loose policy. Because if you read through the statement, what we're still getting the same story as before. But now, in terms of the yeah. market, uh, uh, or, or perceiving that as a step in the direction of actually hiking interest rates, is because they moved from zero point two five percent to 0.5 percent right. in terms of the yeah. of the of the yield curve control ceiling right so now the yeah. market is thinking that okay if they are slowly adjusting then most probably in their next meeting or in their next coming meetings they might they might what they might say that okay we are letting go or we no longer having a yield curve control in terms of its ceiling so that would imply that the that the bank of japan are now open to tightening financial conditions. Essentially, what I mean is that to now look at hiking actual interest rates. Yeah. Because they're no longer keeping the longer term interest rates at lower levels, right? So the market was, because re- remember, the market is always working on expectations and it's always trying to be forward looking. So that was the story that, okay, if they're doing this now, how will it impact us moving forward? So now, the market was anticipating that they would hike interest rates and understandably so if you also read the statement right remember they said that they want core inflation to be exceedingly above two percent in a stable manner yeah. and like i showed it has been for nine months so now if you have core inflation above the two percent target for nine months and then the next thing you have the actual bank of japan coming out and saying that okay now they're doing something that they haven't done in a long time because they st- they they implemented e yield curve control in 2016. Okay. That is when they 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 firstly implemented e yield curve control in 2016. So now they coming in 2020. Uh, there was Three. in 2022 and 2022, then they like, end of yeah and then yeah. they like yes and then they like we are now increasing our yield curve control from 0.25 to 0.5%. Yes, they're still implementing a ceiling 
but now they've just increased it at a point where inflation has been persistently above their 2% target. Now, logically thinking from a, from a macroeconomic standpoint, is that okay? They're moving in this direction of what? Of eventually hiking interest rates. So let us jump in early so that when they actually confirm that, okay, we are hiking interest rates, we're already in the move. You know, so sort of like buy the rumor, sell the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought process. So that is the reasoning behind it. So now, when 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 the Bank of Japan came out in in January and then they were like, no, we are not hiking interest rates. We are keeping them as they are, and we will continue buying bonds. Like we read we read the whole statement. Yes, now yes, it is a disappointment because the market was expecting that. Okay, we now finally after so many years of low interest rates and deflation in, in Japan, now they are start, mm. they, they, they will now see a pivot or a shift in the monetary, uh, in the monetary policy, you know? So it was mm. as a disappointment to market participants that, okay, even if they have inflation persistently above the target and they've just recently adjusted their yield curve control, they are still yeah. not looking to hike. And we still, we still, we still have articles from time to time where we, we where we learn that they still buying bonds, you know? So now it's like, it's leaving the market confused. On one hand, you have factors that are supporting that you guys should now look at hiking interest rates. Yes. But on yes. the other hand, you're still doing things that are you're suppressing doing, interest rates or doing, ensuring doing. that interest rates stay at a lower level, you know? So it's that now sort of like, if I may call it a tug of war between loose conditions or tighter financial conditions, right? Because mm. it can really go either way, but now mm. I think I think data supports more of of actually tightening financial conditions. Like I said, that's what they said they wanted: core inflation above two percent in a stable manner. Even though I personally do not know the description of a stable manner, but nine months above target, that is a stable manner in my opinion. So now the market is expecting that, of which is why I also said that I have now shifted to being bullish. On what on the Japanese yen, right? Of course, I need more data to support that, but I have shifted from being overly bearish in 2021, yeah. 2022. Now I'm shifting to being bullish because that is what they they said they wanted to see on their statement. But at the same time, they still say on that very same statement that they're going to continue at uh, buying right. bonds. So it's that tug of war. So it can so, go right. really go either way. So, so now your, your shift is not is, is based on what they said, not what they, not on what they're doing. Yes, it's it, it's it's based on both what they said and what they're doing. Because what they said is giving me an idea of what to expect in the future, of how they could potentially act. But now, if they're acting in a certain way, that is also pointing or showing me a disconnect, right? Because if they said that they want uh, inflation to be persistently above 2%, and then when inflation is now persist persistently above 2%, they're still not budging in terms of now shifting to hiking interest rates, then yeah. there's now a disconnect. Because what they said and what they're doing, it's not, it's not, it's not in line. So that is why yeah. I say I need more data. By me saying I need more data, I need more... Uh, BOJ speak or Bank of Japan speak in terms of Bank of Japan members maybe speaking or having uh, or having some uh, interviews and them actually saying that they now looking to tighten financial conditions. That is what I mean by that. I need more data. I need more data supporting that. By that I mean like maybe GDP strengthening, PMIs, all of yeah. that, consumer confidence boosting, and all of that. You know, so okay. that is all that I need to now support because. Based on what they said or what they say in their statement, it supports uh, a shift in terms of tightening uh, financial conditions. But now, why why you shift before you get the data or before you get an indication of the data? Because that is what they said they want to do. I am bullish, but I'm not yet buying. So the rumor. So so you yes, take it as a rumor. Yes, we buy the rumor, we sell the facts. I am now bullish, but I'm not yet buying. JPY. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I, I so always more, use... It's more, like, it's more like you're just getting ready to, to buy. Exactly, exactly. It's more like the example I always use with, 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 with the, the dollar. They, 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 
in 2021, they kept on saying that they want to see inflation above targets, exceedingly above 2%, and they also want to see or achieve maximum employment. And then around June, July 2021, inflation was already above their 2% target for a couple of months, number one. Number two, uh, unemployment was also decreasing. Number three, GDP was strengthening. But, okay. this, but the Fed, they were still what? They were still buying bonds or they were still performing quantitative easing. Mm. They had not mm. even started reducing the pace of buying bonds. They were still mm. ongoing with quantitative easing. But there, the data, number one, based on what they said in their statement, inflation and, and, and employment, because employment, unemployment was decreasing, that there was confirmation that, okay, possibly at some point in the future, they will now need to start shifting from quantitative easing to possibly tapering quantitative tightening and hiking interest rates. That was the first confirmation because that is what they said in their statement that they would shift or they would look to shift monetary policy once they've achieved those two things, those two goals. That was the first thing. Now, the second thing was, okay, if they're looking to hike interest rates, they need an economy that will support that. What is an economy that can support that? Showing showing strong growth figures, right? Or, or, or mm. showing a strong help. And that is what I was getting with GDP. GDP sitting in the ranges of 5 to 6%. That was back in 2021, July. July, August. And that is, where mm. I, that is when I started being bullish on the dollar. But only towards the end of 2021 did the Fed start, start actually tapering and be like, okay, we're no longer buying bonds as much as we used to. They were buying them at a, at a, at a I can't really remember the figures, whether it was 124 billion, and then they cut it back to around 90. I can't remember the actual figures, but I'm just giving you a picture. Yeah, yeah, They yeah, were yeah, still yeah, buying yeah. bonds, but yeah. not as excessively. Mm. But there was later in the year of 2021. So it is the same approach that I'm coming with, with the Bank of Japan that, okay, they said in their statement, they want to see core inflation above 2% in a stable manner, of which for me, my, my uh, description of stable manner, nine months is more than an explanation for a stable manner. It shows that that, that inflation is there to stay yeah. above that, 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 percent, that 2% target. Because remember, EPO, Bank of, the, the Japanese economy is coming from a period of deflation, of very low inflation. So if they keep if they can keep inflation above target for nine months, yes, there are second factors. It was because of high commodity prices, so on and so forth. But the bottom line is inflation or core inflation in this case, because remember, core inflation excludes those volatile uh, factors like energy. So if core inflation stays above their target for nine months in an economy that has been experiencing deflation for many many years, that mm. for me is showing a shift in the tide, that the tide is possibly shifting now. And that is what they said in their statement. So that's a first tick. Same, same thing to what I did with the EUS dollar. That's the first tick. So now I need further evidence that support that. The first evidence that was supportive of that, understandably so, was the shift of the yield curve control. Because what does it mean? If they now lifting a ceiling from 0.25 to 0.5, what are they giving? They're giving e-market or their economy some wiggle room in terms of interest rates, which means they are starting, they are starting to open themselves up to interest rates going higher. Or are my yields going Ooh. higher? So now that is where we're starting to get a market shift or a market perception. You go, to, okay, the BOFJ is going to pivot and start hiking interest rates. They come over in January and they're like, no, we're not yet hiking interest rates. They still, they pretty much is still the same statement. We're still looking for this. We're still going to buy bonds uh, whenever necessary. We're still going to ensure that uh, my interest rates remain at their lower levels, right? So yeah. now what I'm saying is that, okay, because what they said on their statement, I feel has been achieved of uh, inflation in a stable manner above 2%. Now, all I need is further evidence that is pointing towards a, a tightening of financial conditions. Yobang issues, I'm looking at um, um, uh, all the incoming data. I'm looking at that, right? I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at exports, imports. I'm looking at bal uh, trade balance or balance of trade. I'm looking at uh, I'm, uh, up GDP. I'm looking at unemployment i'm looking at all those factors that could support mm, mm. an economy that is that is say that expanding is or growing 
you know? Mm. So because if an economy is growing and expanding, it's going to feed into inflation. And if it feeds into inflation for the central bank to lower inflation, then they would need to start hiking interest rates. And also now come yield curve control. What are they, whenever they talking and they being asked up all those questions, how are they responding? So those are now the things that I'm paying attention to. So my, 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 my position has shifted to being bullish, but I'm not yet buying. Okay. I am okay. bullish based on based on the monetary policy okay. statement and their goals there, but I'm not yet buying. Okay. Yeah. So so now in a case whereby now let's say that happens and then um, they start increasing now uh, the mm-hmm. interest rates. What are you gonna pay that that Japanese yen with now? Are you still gonna no. go against the I'm US gonna, or are you? No, I won't go against the dollar. Because for okay. me personally, the dollar is not yet, it is slowing, but it's not yet weak. I'd, okay. I'd, sell, I'd, I'd sell GBP JPY. GBP JPY. Yeah. If I were to look to buy e Japanese yen, in as much as I'd, I'd be collecting a negative swap, but that is the, the currency pay that I'd most probably look to trade if I'm really, really looking to buy JPY. So 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 you you would do that collect that negative swap. Go yes, I would. Yes, if I, which is why I'm saying if I have to buy. Yeah, GPY. yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, that was yeah. my question because. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if, if I'm like okay, if I'm like okay, no, I'm not going to look at maybe trading other currencies where I can earn a positive swap. Maybe like AUDCHF or all those other uh, other economy or currency yeah. pairs. If I like, you have to buy USD JPY because the Bank of Japan are now bullish or now they've tilted to being bullish. Then I could what? The only currency pay based on how things look at the moment is I would sell each, each GBP and buy JPY. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I don't know if there's anybody who wants to ask again or can I That's, carry on? The, yeah. Uh, if 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 you are if your question has been answered, you can most definitely carry on. Uh, yeah, my no, my question is. Oh, been and answered, another thing. Of, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Congratulations, and another thing no as well. On uh, on in addition to EEPOJ and the whole monetary policy stance in terms of financial conditions is that article. I need to search for that article and share the link. Le, where the, the, the POJ governor Kurodu said last, was it last year? Yeah, I think last year, 2022, that monetary policy will remain loose or financial conditions will remain loose until he actually what he actually steps down, of which he yes. is going to be stepping yeah, remember, down around April. Yes. You know? Correct. So all of that for me, I still have that. Maybe, maybe most people have forgotten about that article where he came out and actually said that. But for me, that is still stuck in the back of my mind. So that is why, and as much as I'm bullish, I still know that that is what he said. And I haven't seen an article where he came out and be like, no, I, I wasn't serious about that. Oh. So that is why I say I need more supportive evidence that they are actually headed in that direction. Okay. And then okay. I can look to buy the Japanese. Oh, wow. So yeah. We so now the one who's going to be taking over, you'll also be listening to him closely. Or exactly. Because yeah, in terms of, of course, uh, I can't remember the, the other person who was actually being considered uh, and oh, the yeah. market participants were like, he's, he's, he's a dove. So he's quite dovish. So we oh. might continue with the loose uh, financial conditions. But then again, we understand they're coming from a very long period of deflation. The last thing they want to do is to hike interest rates. And then the next thing, inflation quickly goes back. And now that could potentially lead them back to deflation if it dives even deeper into the negatives or zero and negatives. You know? oh. So maybe that's why they, they're holding on and allowing inflation to run to run above their target for some time before actually hiking because that is it's it's similar to what we've had with the chf just that i haven't went through chf but now chf remember they hiked in june last year and inflation wasn't that much away from their from their target it was slightly above their target and they started hiking and we've seen what we've seen inflation slowing down Excuse me. And now if it if it continues to slow down below their target, because remember, they are also coming from a position of deflation or a, a long deflationary period. 
then that could force them to do what to either hold their interest rates or to maybe even look to cut if inflation continues to dip to dip mm. even further below their target. So further. maybe the BOJ is also avoiding or not necessarily avoiding, but they're trying not to be in that position where they've just recently started hiking interest rates and now they need to cut because they could potentially go back into that long deflationary period uh, that yeah. they've experienced you know no. so i'm also looking at all of those things or those are the things that i have in the back of my mind as i'm assessing the mm. whole situation with the japanese economy mm. okay right right yeah no no i hear you Maki. yeah i hear you uh can i move on to my next question before yeah, i forget most it? definitely can uh yeah here, here's your actual uh it's actually at 0. 0.5 right now because you yeah, can see yeah, that's what i was saying when i said it, it hit the ceiling i saw something like that to say yeah uh, yeah the, the now at 0. 0.5 now what you know like, yeah around around early january it was sitting at 0. 0.5 Zero five, slightly above zero point five, and you can see it's uh, it's sold off. It's yeah. sold off, so now it's back there. So also assessing that, looking at that, is is it going to sell off again, or if we now see, let's say before we even have a an actual uh, cause how 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 do they actually how do they actually control this? It's buying bonds. So okay. once 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 the yield the the ten year yield gets to the ceiling, they buy bonds. They buy more. Remember. Yeah, they buy more bonds because remember bonds and bond yields go in opposite direction, right? Yeah. So we don't necessarily need to hear it from them that they no longer uh, applying yield curve control at 0.5%. We need to see once price gets back to 0.5%, what is the reaction? Are they buying bonds? Because if now they no longer buying bonds, which means that they no longer trying to do what? To suppress a 10 year yield or try and push it lower of which means that they can allow it to push even higher if that is the case then maybe now they are opening up to hiking interest rates so those are the oh. things that i'm looking at so i don't necessarily need to hear it from them that okay we no longer have eu curve control or we've completely scraped that but the reaction of a, a 10 year yield once it gets to the actual ceiling will tell me yeah what i need to know Okay, okay, okay. So as you can see, if you read this last statement, the BOJ has been spending trillions of yen to preserve the ceiling on the 10-year bond as part of efforts to keep borrowing costs low and stimulate the economy. So if I see that reaction again here, then I'm still, I uh, guess I'm, 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 I'm bullish, but I'm not yet buying because they still buy mm. bonds. They're still protecting that ceiling. But once they stop protecting the ceiling, even if it's not yet close to their, to their monetary policy or interest rate decision, then I can look to buy, buy the actual Japanese yen at that point. Ooh. But for now, I'm still, I'm, I have a bullish perspective, but I'm still holding and waiting for more, for more data or more evidence, let me call it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so now, my king, with, with this... Um... Uh, uh, yield at 0 0.5 now. Are there companies within Japan that are buying those uh, bonds or is all the money now going to your US and your Europe and Britain? It's all, it's, 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 it's you know, I read somewhere that uh, I think Japan is the biggest holder out there. Um, I forgot to share that article with you, man. I wanted to speak to you about it, but it's like, mm -hmm. I think they are the ones who are holding more bonds compared to any other country in the world. Them in China, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So now I wanted to know now, are they the 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 the, the companies from that country, are they buying those bonds? Could you know? It's it's mostly I I can't really give a definitive answer, but it's mostly that the, the central bank. It's mostly the same that is buying, yeah. Because of, of which it makes sense if they're holding the most, because they're currently in that position of stimulating the economy. Even China is in that process of stimulating the economy. Okay. So if for them to stimulate the economy, they need to buy bonds because they need to inject more into the economy to keep our yeah. borrowing costs low. Correct. 
So I can't really give a definitive answer in terms of our companies buying, but for sure, yeah. central banks have a bigger uh, portion of of, of, of of that bond buying uh, or holdings okay. of pharma bonds. Okay. No, they are no, the no, ones that just, are responsible for... Yeah, for I was just, I was just curious after reading that um, a lot of yeah. companies from Japan are buying, you were, are buying from the USA. So I was like, oh, okay. So all the money is moving from that country to... To, to the US, but story I actually, for actually, actually share that article with me, the, the link, if, if you, if you actually, if you are able to, to actually get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll yeah, look please, for it and I'll share it. It's, it's, yeah. it's like they had a list of uh, uh, countries that uh, I think they say they hold, they hold the most US debt or something like that. So Japan was number mm-hmm. one, China yeah. was number two. Uh, I don't remember who was number three now, uh, but yeah, it was mostly those um, uh, Asian countries. Oh, oh so okay. they, they, yeah, it, 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 it had to do with their um, uh, companies from that side investing in the US because the interest rates in the US are way much oh, better really? than. Yeah, of which yeah, that makes so, sense in, 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 yeah, that, yeah, in, makes that, sense. in that aspect. Yeah, yeah, it also opened my eyes a bit, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find the article and I'll share it with you. Please do, please do. Yeah, I'll share it with you. Interesting. Hey, my king, the other thing, man, is um, these tensions between US and China, those guys have been shooting a lot of object from the sky <laughs> in the USA. <laughs> what going on? Should we be worried? Are you are you watching that? Are you aware? Yeah, how, no, how I, 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 I am watching it. Uh for now it's still that that they just shooting down. So like okay. I like I always it. say it's, I'm just yeah I'm just keeping an eye on it. For now it's not something I'm really concerning myself about. But okay. I know that if it were, if if we were to have like a serious trade tension, uh, uh, yeah. or even a possible war between uh, China and the US, then it would definitely affect because those are like the two yeah, biggest yeah, 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 yeah. economies. Correct, correct. So we would have like, yeah, it would definitely have a global scale in terms of impact, because remember, even last year it started with uh, when. Uh, what was China, sort of like China invasion of Taiwan. Remember when they were performing yes, yes, all those military, military drills. And then yeah. we had uh, Nancy Pelosi, who's this, the US, I can't remember what her position, but it, she's from the White House. She actually visited Taiwan and China was not happy about that. And they started making mm. sort of like threats, you know? So yeah. if, if, if this also perpetuates to something bigger, then we could have uh, a, a possible uh, another war on our hands, or maybe in some sort of uh, geopolitical uh, factor that could impact the markets negatively. So I'm just paying attention to it, uh, okay. keeping an eye, uh, keeping myself up to date with all the developments. Yeah, but for now, it's not really something oh, right. that I'm primarily focusing on. But okay. I do understand that if if it it's if it really perpetuates to something bigger it's it yeah it will definitely uh, affect the <laughs> okay. market yeah all right all right all right no i'm happy with it yeah i think that was that all would... my questions i'm sure you were yeah. touch on the us dollar so i'm not gonna ask questions there <laughs> no but, on, the, on um... the dollar i'll just i'll just touch on 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 what i've actually uh what i've actually like what happened this week, essentially. That's that's pretty much what I'll touch on in terms of what no, happened. Actually, this week. No, you're cutting now. Start start with that uh, employment report, that unemployment report. You know, the, 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 the labor market, it came out uh, strong. And I think a lot of people are not expecting that, even most um, uh, investors. Yeah. So maybe start yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, where do you what, what, what do you want to know about that? For me, that one is straightforward. No, no, I'm just no, asking. Remember, some, no. yeah. remember, remember, last year when we were talking about this US dollar, yeah. I remember we said that uh, uh, towards the end of the first quarter, mm-hmm. they are probably gonna start uh, cutting because they yeah. will have 
done well against the the inflation. Inflation, yes. Yes, but now it doesn't look like that is going to happen. Exactly. Yes. So that is why I was saying, is is it now starting from that that uh, 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 unemployment report, which showed mm-hmm. that they've actually added that how many how many was it fifty thousand or thirty thousand? Was- it was it was it was it actually the it, it was the actual figure was 500 500,000 500, 500, when when i think i think the forecast were around 200 if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah so it was way greater than what they expected correct so now they're going to they're going to they're going to what now they're going to keep uh, uh, raising or but what's going to happen okay now i i want I, i'm going to make you answer that question and, and there's a reason why. I'll make you answer yeah. your own question. Okay. So <laughs> let's go back to the starting point. Uh, first lesson, we when we dived into inflation and unemployment, interest rates and unemployment, right? So yeah. when, the, when the Fed or when the central bank is hiking interest rates, what are they trying to do? They're trying to kill demand, right? Correct. What produces demand is if people have... People income, buy you know, disposable yeah. income, yeah, goods and services. Yeah. So now, if they are trying to kill demand, that means that it demand for goods and services should go down. And one of the ways that it will go down is that people are being unemployed, they're losing Correct. their jobs. So, which yeah. means that far less people have money to spend. Mm-hmm. So, if now they are hiking interest rates, but more people are getting employed, what does that mean? Will that kill demand? No. Exactly. So that, I think that should answer your question. So now what is the next move for the Fed? Because remember, their job or their objective is to kill demand, of which it will ultimately result in the dampening of inflation. So what what do you I don't want to say what what are they going no. to do, but what do you think is the I most think, likely I part? Think, I think they're going to, to they're going to increase the interest. Exactly. That is what I also think to answer your question. So, so that so is where, need... yeah. So that is where it starts. No, or, or not starts, but that is what has perpetuated the situation in terms of ex- anticipation of the Fed to stay higher for longer. Does not mean, like I, I said, even that in in the previous uh, uh, lessons, that it does not mean that they now have to step up and and move from zero point two five to now hiking by zero point five or zero point seven five percent. Fifty basis point or seventy five basis okay, point, okay. but it means that interest rates might stay higher for longer. Maybe they might even keep hiking by zero point two five percent for longer. Because oh, what were the market geez. expectations that they were going to hike in their next meeting in March and then probably hold after that and not look okay. to hike interest rate yeah. further? Ooh. But if we're having a strong labor market, that is telling us that inflation is definitely not going to come down. Yeah, although it was because showing signs of coming down. Yeah, it is. It is slowing down. Actually, it, it is slowing down. But we've also had what? We've also had energy prices also decreasing. Commodity prices decreasing. Correct. So now if China, re- the reopening of China, of which probably will, will get its full effect towards the second, the end of the end of the second quarter uh, or, or, or mid-year, then if China is reopening, then that means that commodity prices or the demand of oil will also go up. Yeah. If that yeah. happens, it will feed into inflation. And if it feeds into inflation, whereas the labor market, the US labor market is still tight, then that means that the Fed might have to continue hiking. So I'm not saying they have to step up in terms of the increases, but I feel that they are going to continue hiking. Even I try to continue at... Yeah. When you say step up, you mean like 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 uh, aggressively from zero point two five? Yeah, aggressively. That's the yeah, correct okay. word. I don't right. I don't think they're going to have to hike aggressively, All but right. I think that interest rates will stay higher for longer until there is evidence of it demand actually going down. Oh, okay, Be- okay. Because even if we look at e, we look at the most recent uh, data that we had. We had our retail sales, right? Mm. So we had. Let, let us actually go into the calendar. We had AMA retail sales. They're actually surprised to the upside. Right? Of which they were greater than expected. So all of that okay. is, 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 is pushing the narrative that 
we might not have seen the last of inflation. That even inflation mm. itself, even though it came in below the previous readings, but it came in greater than the forecast, as you can see. Forecast yeah, was a 6.2, yeah. it came in at 6.4. Forecast was 5.5, it came in at 5.6. Yes, it's still slowing down because it's less than the previous reading, but if we're seeing the drop, because look at that, how, how it was from, uh, okay, let's start at 6.3%. 6.3, it dropped to three. From six, it dropped to 5.7. Here, it has been dropping by zero point bar. Remember what I also used to say, that the rate of change. It has been, it was dropping by, let's call it from 6.3 to six, let's say 0 0.3. Mm. So a 0 mm. 0.3 drop to 6%. Another 0 0.3 drop to 5.7%, and now a 0 0.1 drop to 5.6%. Is the rate of change increasing or decreasing? It's yes, it's only one, one reading so far, but it, it's significantly decreased. Yes. So, so that could also be telling that no, inflation is not yet on, 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 a, on, a, on a smooth trajectory lower. It might oh. be stickier than expected. And then okay. in addition to that, so that is just one of the things we're looking at. But in addition to that, we also had a, also sh shelter inflation or, or, or shelter part of inflation was also showed a greater increase as well, right? So that also shows that inflation is being stickier than expected. Even inflation on a, let's, let's actually go to inflation on a monthly reading. We can look at core inflation. We can look at also the actual inflation rate. So it actually increased from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5, right? And the, if you can read here, the index for shelter was by far the largest contributor, right? So that we also need to see that slowing down for us to be comfortable. Okay, probably inflation will also be heading lower. So all those things are not really supportive of a Fed pivot. Oh. For me, I want to see data supporting that. For me, oh. currently, the, 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 this is not supportive of a Fed pivot. If inflation on a monthly change is jumping up like this, yes, it's still way below the target, but it's still, it pushed higher. Then we moved to yesterday where we had uh, high South African inflation. We had, uh, where was US retail sales on a monthly, on a monthly basis, right? Expectations uh, were, okay, the retail sales unexpectedly jumped 3% month over month in January, the biggest increase since March of 2021 and way above market forecast of 1.8%. So that is also what? That is also a jump in, 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 uh, in, in, in retail sales. What does that tell us? The data show that consumer spending remains robust. If we hear that word consumer spending remains robust, mm. then what is that telling us? Of course, yeah, amid a stronger still, labor market, still, wage growth, and hmm. signs of easing inflationary pressures, retail sales, okay, retail sales aren't adjusted for inflation. So they might not be that accurate of a measure because they're not adjusted for inflation. But if they're telling us that uh, consumer spending is still robust, that means it's going to feed into demand. So demand might remain higher. Mm. If demand remains higher, then probably inflation. the fight is not yet over for the Fed because yeah. it will feed into inflation. So I'm looking at all those, all these things that, okay, they're not, they're not really supportive of a Fed pivot, but maybe it's because I'm just basic. I'm just looking at the basic things. I don't have those um, uh, deeper uh, uh, what research uh, insights. But if I'm looking at the basic data, if for me yeah. so far, it's all supporting that we are not yet to see a Fed pivot or maybe even the Fed start to cut interest rates. It does not also support an aggressive hike, but it definitely does not support a, a, a cut in interest rates mm. anytime mm. soon. So, so, even, so basically yeah. your, your expectation is for interest rate to remain high. That's, that's High, exactly. Yeah. If, even mm. if they, they, they no longer aggressive, but maybe they might keep on just hiking by 0.25%. Yes, yes but they will still be remaining higher than what the market is currently expecting because the market is expecting a peak at, at around 5% of which we are, which is why they were expecting the next hike to be in March at 0 0.25 from 4.75 okay. to 0, to 0.2, sorry, to 5%. And then from there, the Fed will hold. But if we keep getting data like this, I doubt that the Fed will hold because they'll see that inflation, that their fight against inflation is far from over. And then, like I said, if we also have those secondary factors 
of China reopening, it's going to feed into inflation as well. Correct, correct. And then also today, lastly, on that point, we also had, uh, okay, building permits showed a slowdown, but we had AMA PPI, which is producer price index. So that is also inflation from the producer side. We saw Mm. an increase, previously negative 0.2 on a monthly basis. Expectations were 0.4, it jumped to 0.7. We saw uh, core, even core, where's the core part? Core PPI on a monthly as well. Expectations were a 0.3, which is unchanged from the previous reading, or a decrease to 0.2, it jumped to 0.5. So all those oh. things are showing, for me, they're showing that inflation is still sticky, even on a yearly basis in terms of infl- of PPI, producer price index, from uh 5.8 previously, expectations were dropped to 4.9 or 5.1. It actually came in at 5.4. Yes, it mm. decreased, or it's less than the previous reading, but it's way greater than what the markets expected. So all these slight surprises to the upside might be proving that inflation is not... Yes, it's, it has been decreasing, but the fight is still far from over. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that yeah. is essential. You've just asked that, but that is what I wanted to cover based on what has happened or, or the data we've received this week and how, for me, it's still supportive of higher interest rates for longer for the dollar. And not, I'm not yet seeing a cut in interest rates. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I hear, I hear, I hear you, you, you loud and clear. And I understand what you're saying there. So that, that is my position when it comes to the mm. dollar. Of which is why I said that uh, even if I were to get a bullish uh, shift uh, from the Bank of Japan in terms of monetary policy, I definitely wouldn't be looking to sell USDJPY. So those who are jumping in to sell the dollar now, they're way too quickly or they're just thinking it has peaked and it's time to buy. That's where people want to catch it. That's where the participants exactly. want to catch it on top. Yeah, exactly. For me, I need further evidence. <clears throat> Sorry. The same way when I was buying, uh, when I looked to buy the dollar, I waited for evidence. Yeah. I want more evidence that now, okay, we can look to sell. Hmm. So I'm not saying they're wrong in selling the dollar, but for me, I, I would be wrong in selling the dollar prematurely because that is not what I'm getting from the data. And like I said, yeah. maybe because I'm just basic. I just... I just focus on the basics. It's okay if yeah, yeah. Well, you follow your plan. You follow your yeah, plan. So if the labor so market <clears throat> exactly, if the labor market is still strong, then that is going to feed into inflation. Hmm. Wages as well, they will feed into inflation. So, so yeah. Wow. Wow. That okay. is the story yeah, for no. me when it comes to the dollar. Yeah. No, I got you. Got you, Martin. Um, so, any um, more questions? Congratulations. Eh, uh, no, not from my side. Um, okay. I think I'm sorted for now. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of anything. So, you can carry on okay. or. Uh, I think we all we only have two. It's only you and and Kelvin that we have here. So I'll just ask him if he ever if he has any question. If not, <clears throat> then we'll we'll wrap up the session. Oh, I left my question in the chat box. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was just gonna ask you if you can explain a little bit better um, about the bond yields. And why we are pay why we pay attention to it, and what the difference between the ten year bonds and the two year bonds are, and why we utilize the two ten spreads. Okay, okay. Now, yeah, I can see your question. Ah, uh, it's a bit of a trick. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like I always say, I, I'm very basic, guys. Uh, I did not study economics, so I'll be as basic as I possibly can be, because that is how I I understood it. So essentially. 10 year, how I view it, 10 year, of course, it's the longer term interest rates and the two year, it's the shorter term interest rates. That is how I view it. So when it comes to, when it comes to the bond yields and why we also focus on the two and the 10 year spread, spread 
specifically if that is if we're referring to yield curve, it is because in a normal setting, how I understood it, in a normal setting, even if even if I approach a bank and I'm like, I'm looking to invest, if if you're going to invest for the longer term, they usually offer a higher interest rate compared to someone who is going to invest in the shorter term. So that is how I'm just how I paint the picture of, of the difference between the two-year and the 10-year. Why do they offer a longer term interest rates on the, on the, on, why do they pay you more if you invest for a longer term than a shorter term? It's because a lot can happen in, let's say, let's say 10 years. A lot can change in 10 years. A lot of things can go wrong in 10 years, right? And of course, they'll still have your money with them. So they, they would also have more room to use your money. And like I just said, a lot of things can go wrong. So that is why they offer you a, greater interest if you invest for the longer term compared to the shorter term. So now how I translate that looking at bonds, because I look at bond, bond yields is actually interest. So when, we, when it comes to the actual yield curve, a steepening yield curve is a normal yield curve. What does that mean? That means that the higher term interest rates are greater than the shorter term interest rate and like for reasons, one of the reasons being what I've just explained in terms of risk and investments and so on and so forth. So if now we're having a, a situation where the shorter term interest rates, like I said, two year is increasing, how is it increasing? Because if the central bank is hiking interest rates today, chances of them affecting a 10 year interest or, or yield are the, the impact is minimal compared to a shorter term interest rates because interest rates will change today and probably in the next couple of months. So that is why we get, we have more of a response or a, an impact on a two-year compared to a 10-year. So eventually, the more the, the, the Fed keeps hiking or that central bank keeps hiking interest rates today, that will mean that the shorter term interest rates start increasing and they will eventually surpass the longer term interest. Where now we have two-year interest rates higher than the 10-year interest rates. And now this inverts or it reverses the whole process of if you invest for the longer term, you're getting more of an interest compared to investing for a shorter term. So now shorter term in investments are more attractive than longer term investments because we have what? Because we have a, uh, we have a higher interest payment in the shorter term than, you, than, if, than if you invest in the longer term because the yields are now two years higher than the 10 year. And that is when we have that, what? That yield curve inversion, because that means that at some point, the, what, the, that specific central bank will have to cut interest rates to normalize things again, because the normal, like I said, the normal pattern is higher interest, longer term than shorter term. So I don't know if I answered your question there. Yeah, yeah, you answered my question. Yeah, I understand. Um, also, I was gonna ask you, in terms of reading inflation numbers on trading economics, yes. um, is looking at the core inflation number the same thing as looking at core CPI? Or do they just label it differently? Uh, for me, I just focus on the actual core inflation because that is more like a percentage. Okay, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm asking if, the, if uh, on trading economics, when it says core inflation, are they referring to core CPI? Or yeah, yeah, it's core it's core CPI. Okay, okay, okay. And then we just look at the PPI afterwards. Yes, and then the PPI okay. we also have the PCE of which that the Fed uh the personal consumption exp uh, yeah expenditure. Okay, yeah, yeah. Makes sense, yeah, the Fed also <laughs> focuses on that. So I also keep an eye on that as well. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I was just getting a little confused because of the labeling on uh, on trading economics is a little different from all the websites. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, it's just core CPI or core okay, inflation. Okay. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, I mean, if nobody else has any questions, do you want to just do one example of like a trade setup from A to Z before wrap up, or I don't know if you have time. In in the next in the next one, there will be, which okay. is why I wanted this Q and A because after this, I'll probably have. We are approaching the end of this whole uh session, so the next one, because remember. I only did the Australian dollar and I said I'll also do another currency or economy mm -hmm. where I'm expecting the opposite, right? Where I'm ex anticipating some, where I'm looking to possibly sell that economy. So mm -hmm. that is what I'll do next. And then after that, I'll, I'll tie everything together. Okay, okay for sure. Yeah. 
So, so in the next session, I, I will definitely do that. Okay. Can I ask you a quick question about uh, what's going on with Euro USD? Um, as yeah. you can see, we've had that bullish run on Euro USD from I think it was from September or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, would you attribute that to weakness in the dollar, or do you think there was a bit of strength um, in the euro also that contributed to that? Uh, I'd say I'd say more, more for more anticipation of of a dollar pivot or a Fed pivot. Sorry, so I'd say I'd say it's market market expectations expecting the dollar to be weak. Uh, that it that is that is what was the fundamental driver. That's euro okay. strength. I'd say maybe a small fraction, but I don't okay. I don't think it's really really driven by by euro strength. Okay, so so yeah. um, that bullish run that we had from September, you would attribute that to um, more so market sentiment, like people are attempt, are anticipating um, dollar strength or dollar weakness. Uh, do anticipating dollar weakness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because no because because for because for the ECB it's been the same. We we're gonna hike even now. They clear we're gonna hike by fifty basis points. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, but then it's like. Does the, the, does the data support the narrative? If you compare the mm -hmm. two, the dollar is in a better position, but because of market expectations, that is what they've been expecting, that the dollar has been hiking for a longer period and more aggressively. So mm -hmm. they've probably close to their peak in terms of the terminal rate. And so now market participants are anticipating what? A pivot in the Fed, of which they've been expecting that since when? Since around September last year. Mm -hmm. So all okay. this time, that is what the market has been focusing. The market stopped focusing on around September. That is when they started. They stopped focusing on bullish, uh, on 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 dollar bullish signs, and they yeah. started looking for the tiniest of 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 cracks that you can find that could signal dollar weakness or maybe slowing okay. in the economy. And then they would hop onto that, and then they would cling on to that, and that, which is why I say. That euro USD is mostly attributed to that because if the dollar appreciates, then the euro um, goes mostly goes in the opposite direction. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so was there a specific data that came out that caused the pivot? Or was it just so uh job owning from the central banks? Uh I'd, I'd say I'd say it's more it's more market 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 participants in terms of uh, expectations. Uh because not really job burning because they were hiking. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, also, yeah. I mean, something would have to provoke them to switch their narratives, right? I yeah, just I, I wasn't paying attention to fundamentals at the time. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, no, no, I understand, I understand. But yeah. on, on the other on the other end, also had uh, the POJ. Remember, that is when they were they were stepping in aggressively in terms of intervention, right? In mm -hmm. terms of uh, actually intervening in the currency markets uh, by by selling USD JPY, so also that it added it added fuel to the fire uh, to a certain degree that okay market participants are, are, are expecting what a a pivot in the in the Fed uh, <clears throat> monetary policy stance and also inflation for the Fed actually started declining around that same time I think it was in June when we saw that. Uh, let us actually go to the dollar when we saw that sort of like peak, if I may call it, in inflation. So obviously, if they're seeing that, then because remember at that point, it was clearly evident of which till to till this date it is that they're fighting inflation. So if now we're coming from an era where we had two negative quarterly growth of GDP for the dollar in the first and the second quarter, if you recall correctly. That is what we had last year. And then after that, around June, I'm looking for inflation. Around June, uh, we had, I think it was, yeah, it was in June. That was the highest reading. And then uh, sub sub subsequently after that, we've been having lower readings in inflation. Okay. So that okay. is also shifting the market's positioning from a market, remember, most, 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 not most investors, but most market participants have been calling that the dollar is over bought. So at some point it needs to sell off. Mm -hmm. So now, like I said, if they seeing just those small signs of, let's say confirmation that we might be headed in that direction. So they run with it. Mm 
So it was all of those things. We had the BOJ intervening this side, which means that they they definitely tired of the Japanese of the Japanese yen weakness and also the dollar strength in USD JPY, which is why they were actively selling or, part, or intervening. And then on the other hand, we have inflation peaked in around June and it has been decreasing. And around September, it's been three months or two months of lower inflation reading. So now the market is probably thinking, okay, probably the Fed has done more than enough for inflation to slow down, to, to, to move or to track back down closer to their targets, you know? So all of those things, it was just, we've been, it's been a, a strong bull run for the dollar. So now we need, we need the tide to shift in the opposite direction. Okay. And who knows, this might be the actual pivot. So everyone was jumping on at that point. That is my oh. view. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. So would you, um, with the current unemployment uh, numbers coming out and the, and the inflation going back up, would you say we were, we were wrong? Or would you say there's still a pivot on the way we're just getting a retracement on your list? Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't say we're wrong, but data is, is still not supportive of a fit pivot. Okay. In my in my in my in my personal view, right? Or in my honest opinion. I feel I feel more than anything we are in it, what do they call it? Disinflationary boom. Okay. Yeah, as in the, the market, the, the the actual economy still is still gonna pick up in growth. Okay. Whereas we've had this 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 lower inflation readings. So I feel that that is that is that is the sort of position we headed into. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Any more questions? No, that's all for me. Oh, okay. But as always, guys, as I, I do not know everything. It's just no take. on things and how I view and what actually works. Like I always say, if you have any suggestions or you have a different view, uh, feel free to share it. Uh, Cause I, I will obviously learn you as much as you, I hope you're learning something from me. Uh, I would also definitely learn a lot from you guys. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah, no. who's actually trying to join right now. Uh, do, 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 do you have any more questions? I uh, know I'm, I'm, I'm good on my side, my team. Uh, Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, in that case, uh, I think we'll end it here for tonight. And then we'll have our next session soon. Uh, I try, I'll try and... No, yeah, we'll have our next session soon, guys. Yeah, uh, of course, I'll, I'll alert everyone uh, on, on, on when that will be. So cheers, everyone. Have a... Okay, if you're in South Africa, have a good night. I'm not sure about your time, Calvin, but enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, my friend. Have a good rest of your night. Okay. Cheers. Okay, cheers, Mikey.